and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. How many of you actually listened to the words of the choir anthem? I got a couple of hands. I thought it was very lovely. Oh, the choir. I would say, I hope the choir at least paid attention, right? There is a candle in every soul, some burning brightly and some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. In each and every one of us, there's a candle burning. There's something going on in our souls that's not us. There's something inside of us that is something outside of us. There's something inside of us that is outside of us. Right? This morning we heard the beginning of the, the Sermon on the Mount. It's three chapters in the Gospel of Matthew that starts out with the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are... The poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. How many of you feel blessed when you're mourning? How many of you feel blessed when people make fun of you? How many of you feel blessed when you think, my life is complete mess and there's no way that any of this will ever work out? Here recently, one of, my, one of the songs I've been listening to and hearing a lot is by a band called We Are Messengers. Does anybody know that band? Anybody? Has anyone heard of them? I, say, I hope my family at least raises their hands because they've been in the car when I've listened to this song. So. The song is called Maybe It's Okay. Maybe it's okay by We Are Messengers. The first verse is, If I didn't know what it hurt like to be broken, then how would I know what it feels like to be whole? And if I didn't know what it costs like to be rejected, then how, then I wouldn't know what your, what your love is coming home. Maybe it's okay if I'm not okay. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying to each and every one of us. Maybe it's okay that we're not okay on our own. And maybe it's okay if sometimes we don't get things right. And maybe it's okay if sometimes things don't happen the way that we think they're supposed to happen. This morning I started working on a sermon for this, for this reading. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are you when you suffer persecuted because of righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. And I was scouring the web and I found a sermon by a colleague of mine from House for All Sinner and Sinners and Saints in Denver, Colorado. Her name is Pastor Nadia Boltzweber. And this sermon sums it up better than I could ever say anything about this text. So I'm going to read for you now an excerpt from her sermon. These are not my words, but these words ring so true in every, in every facet of the way that this sermon needs to be heard by you. Because this is what needs to be said about this text today. So again, these are not my words. I'm reading a sermon by Pastor Nadia Boltzweber. It can be easy to look at a saint like Mother Teresa and think, well, she is a saint because she was meek. And so if I too want to be blessed, I should try to be and be meek like her. Don't get me wrong. We could use a few more people trying to be like Mother Teresa. I just don't think... That her virtue of meekness is what made her considered blessed by Jesus. Because what if the Beatitudes aren't about a list of conditions we should try and meet to be blessed? What if these are not virtues we should aspire to? But what if Jesus is saying blessed are the meek is not instructive? What if it's performative? Meaning the pronouncing of blessing is actually what confers the blessing itself. Maybe the Sermon on the Mount is all about Jesus' seemingly lavish blessing of the world around him especially that which society doesn't seem to have time for. People in pain, people who work for peace instead of profit, people who exercise mercy instead of vengeance. So maybe Jesus is actually just blessing people, especially the people who never seem to receive blessing otherwise. I mean, come on, doesn't that just sound like something Jesus would do? Extrava extravagantly throwing around blessings as though they grew on trees? Because I, I like to imagine Jesus here standing among us saying, 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the agnostics. Blessed are they who doubt. Those who aren't sure, who can still be surprised. Blessed are they who are spiritually impoverished, and therefore not so certain about everything that they no longer take in new information. Blessed are those who have nothing to offer. Blessed are those for whom nothing seems to be working. Blessed are the preschoolers who cut in line at communion. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for you are heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And blessed are they for whom death is not an abstraction. Blessed are they who have buried their loved ones, for whom tears are as real as an ocean. Blessed are they who have loved enough to know what loss feels like. Blessed are the mothers of the miscarried. Blessed are they who don't have the luxury of taking things for granted anymore. Blessed are they who can't fall apart because they have to keep it together for everyone else. Blessed are the motherless, the alone, the ones for whom so much has been taken. Blessed are those who, are, who still aren't over it yet. Blessed are they who laugh again when for so long they thought they never would. Blessed are those who mourn. You are heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who no one else notices. The kid who sits alone at the middle school lunch table. The laundry guys at the hospital. The sex workers and the sh night shift street sweepers. Blessed are the losers and the babies and the parts of ourselves that are so small. The parts of ourselves that don't want to make eye contact with the world that only loves the winners. Blessed are the forgotten. Blessed are the closeted. Blessed are the unemployed, the unimpressive, the underdepressed. Under rep underrepresented. Blessed are the teens who have to figure out a way to hide the new cuts on their arms. Blessed are the meek. You are of heaven, and Jesus blessed you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the wrongly accused, the ones who never catch a break, the ones for whom life is hard, for they are those with whom Jesus chose to surround himself. Blessed are those without documentation. Blessed are the ones without lobbyists. Blessed are the foster kids, the trophy kids, the special ed kids, and every other kid who just wants to feel safe and loved and never does. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are they who know there has to be more than this because they are right. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are those who make terrible business decisions for the sake of people. Blessed are the burnout social workers and the overworked teachers and the pro bono caregivers. Blessed are the kids who step between bullies and the weak. Blessed are they who delete hateful homophobic comments off their friends' Facebook pages. Blessed are the ones who have received such real grace that they, no long, they are no longer in a position of ever deciding who the deserving poor are. Blessed is everyone who has ever forgiven me when I didn't deserve it. Blessed are the merciful. For they totally get it. See, I like to imagine, imagine Jesus here blessing us because I believe that is our Lord. Maybe the first time he blessed all the things we try to hide or make up for or the things we insult in ourselves and others wasn't in the Beatitudes. Maybe it was his life. Because after all, it was Jesus who had all the powers of the universe at his disposal, but who did not consider equality with God something to be exploited but instead came to us in the most vulnerable of ways of powerless flesh and blood newborn, as though to say, you may hate your bodies, but I am blessing all human flesh. You may admire strength and might, but I am blessing all human weakness. You may seek power, but I am blessing all human vulnerability. This Jesus whom we follow cried at the tomb for his friend and turned the other cheek and forgave those who hung him on a cross. He was God's beatitude, God's blessing of the weak in a world that only admires the strong. So if you are here tonight, mourning, or feeling forsaken, abused, unseen, or no longer useful, if you perhaps, like myself, are all too aware that it's not your strength and virtue that qualify you to be called a saint, but your need for a God who makes all things beautiful out of dust, then this meal we are about to eat is for you. It is much for we who believe we have no need for it as it is for we who believe we are not worthy of it.
And I know that is not your that it's not your ability to do for yourself, but your hunger that qualifies you to be fed. For it is a beatitude meal, the broken, blessed, and given body of Christ. So as you are, come, behold who you are. And as the blessing of Jesus pronounced on this mount so long ago, know that it is here that you become what you receive. None of us are worthy of any of this. But Jesus calls each and every one of us blessed. No matter where we are or what's going on in our lives. Jesus loves us where we are. And calls us to come and take what we can't possibly get for ourselves. Not because of anything that we've done, but because he loves us so much. He gives us himself. And the blessing Jesus pronounced on that mount so long ago. Now that it is here that you can become what you receive. Know that Jesus loves you, and that He calls you to send you as a light into the world, so that everyone can see exactly what the love of Christ can do in their life.